Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Wednesday, March 6, 2013. I'm Darko and this is my website ggnonline.com where you can find all my videos from when I started. Um, let's see here, I have a poll up here. It's ggnonline.com, the website link. Do you believe the recent anti-Israel stance by the Obama regime is a counterintelligence operation to make Israel appear vulnerable to attack by Iran? Because of course we're seeing that a lot. Uh, you know. You're saying a lot of things, Obama acting like he's anti-Israel, the whole thing with Hegel, and uh, but the, their actions are what? They completely financially and militarily, politically support them. So, so far, 80% uh, say yes, and 10% are saying no, followed by 10% saying not sure. Hegel to Barack of Israel, U.S. will keep up aid to Israel despite fiscal troubles. On Iran and Syria, Hegel reassures Barack that all options are on the table. So the new Secretary of Defense met with the Israeli Defense Minister on Tuesday at the Pentagon to reassure him that the diplomatic window on Iran is closing and that despite tough fiscal times in Washington, uh, the exorbitant amounts of aid to Israel would not be affected. According to the Pentagon, Hegel expressed a strong commitment to Israel's security, including maintaining Israel's qualitative military edge and continued U.S. support for missile and rocket defense systems, that's the Iron Dome, in spite of fiscal constraints. Hegel and Barack, the Pentagon a statement adds, that uh, agreed that the United States-Israeli defense relationship has never been stronger than during the Obama administration and that both nations will continue this unprecedented close uh, cooperation. The observers who expected Hegel, who had a reputation for issuing harsh criticisms of Israel to differentiate the U.S. relationship with Israel, at least slightly, have thus far been disappointed by his close adherence to the Obama administration's approach over the last four years. Homeless population in New York City reaches record, uh, what is this, 50,000 people. New report reveals the number of people living in homeless shelters in New York City has surpassed 50,000 people at night, a record high for the city and 19% jump from last year. It says here it was a reflection of a broader national trend of homeless people. It says a startling number show up a sharp increase in child homelessness with more than 21,000 children forced to seek shelter each night in January. And this is what they do, right? Louisiana health officials order shelter to throw away 1,600 pounds of venison. That's right. Remember, Louisiana ordered it to be destroyed by health and hospital officials. And why? Because it's not protocol. It's not permitted. They must protect the people who eat at the rescue mission. Cannot allow a potentially serious health threat to endanger the public. Britain to provide further assistance for the terrorists in Syria. Britain is to boost assistance to insurgents in Syria, providing them with military equipment, says British Foreign Ministry, uh, British Foreign Secretary, sorry, William Hague. 13 million pounds. Five million Britons live in food poverty, studies show. So these articles, can, stories, and statistics come out uh, weekly, almost on a daily basis with the US and the UK, because it's all part of the same plan or agenda. Uh, nearly 5 million people across Britain are struggling to afford nutritious meals, the study finds. It says 4.7 million people out of Britain's 60 million spend at least 10% of their income on food. The study says job losses, benefit cuts, and rising food prices have led to a food crisis in the UK in which families are now spending 20% more on food than five years ago, but at the same time eating 7% less. Yeah, I just covered yesterday about how in the UK and in the US, uh, at least in the US for women, uh, that the uh, life expectancies are going down. So don't let them fool you when they keep saying that you're living longer, you're living longer. No, those people that can afford to live longer will and are. Kerry says US more confident arms are flowing to the Syrian moderates. US Secretary of State John Kerry said on Tuesday, Washington was increasingly confident that weapons being sent to the Syrian opposition by other countries were going to moderate forces. Weapons sent to Syrian opposition are in safe hands, says Kerry. So Kerry just, uh, what, passed the $60 million aid uh, package as well. Um, and I just talked about this, right? I just talked about how there was all these skirmishes going on on the border of Syria and Israel, and that uh, there was actually a UN representative peacekeeper that was uh, that was kidnapped and I said what that's that was the rebels who kidnapped them uh, and then we have this uh, Syrian rebels seize UN peacekeepers near Golan Heights 
The rebels have seized a convoy of UN peacekeepers near Golan Heights and say they will hold them captive until Assad's forces pull back from a rebel-held village which has seen recent fighting, heavy recent fighting. Seizure is the most direct threat to UN personnel. So these people are supposed to be helping these people, right? The quote opposition, which are mostly foreign mercenary terrorists, mostly Sunni. So uh, this is just another act of desperation, you know, the kidnappings and all that, uh, looting. And they were getting their rear ends handed to them by, uh, by military forces. So that's what they did. And they drug it to Israel's border, which, of course, like we've covered many, many times, Israel loves those situations where they say, I, we cannot stand idle. Something must be done. We're being attacked. UN Security Council condemned seizure of peacekeepers by mil uh, Syrian militants. So they've strongly condemned the seizure of the UN peacekeepers in Israel-occupied Golan Heights by foreign-backed Syrian militants, demanding their immediate release. Israel warns United Nations as Syria war moves into buffer zone. So, see, this is this is how you could tell that this was probably even part of uh, the plan. This was from the 4th of March. It's been around a month since Israel last attacked Syria, targeting multiple sites belonging to the Assad government. It says here, Israeli envoy warned the UN Security Council that those relatively minor sort of attacks, part of Israel's policy of maximum restraint, could be a thing of the past. Israel cannot expect uh, cannot be expected to stand idle as the lives of its citizens are being put at risk by the Syrian government's reckless actions. Israel has reportedly been planning a full-scale invasion of southern Syria with the hopes of seizing more of the Golan Heights. So it goes on here, it says the latest pretext is, is the increasing fighting in the area of separation between the Israeli-occupied Golan and the rest of the Heights, which is supposed to be a buffer zone for the Israel-Syria war that has never formally ended. Western-backed rebels have moved into the area and are facing Syrian military shelling, bringing those shells over or ever closely uh, to the Israeli frontier. Russia needs a wake-up call on Syria and Iran. So it says, they asked the question, is Russia sleepwalking when it comes to defending allies Syria and Iran and ultimately its own vital long-term interests? So it seems that Russian leaders are befuddled by the conflict raging in Syria, sensing rightly on one hand that the Western powers and their Turk and Arab proxies are conducting a low-intensity war for regime change, yet strangely, on the other hand, Moscow appears apathetic and blasé about the West's criminal geopolitical agenda. So, the governor says Russia and China must be cognizant of the bigger picture by now. The post-9-11 war on terror charade has nothing to do with uh, an international fight against terrorism and all to do with the American-led capitalist Western powers staking out new global spheres of influence, including Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Somalia, Syria, Mali, are all part of this continuum and Washington's vision of full-spectrum dominance and resource-rich regions. Qatar lectures carry on arming Syrian rebels. Qatar, which has provided weapons to fight the rebels fighting Assad, gently lectured visiting Secretary of State uh, John Kerry to say on the reluctance to become more involved in two-year civil war, a sectarian war and foreign invasion that's killed 70,000 Syrians. So Qatar's Prime Minister applauded the recent expansion of European EU uh, aid directly to fighters but said it could have come sooner. He suggested the U.S. is needlessly preoccupied with worries that some arms meant for the rebels might end up in the hands of militants who oppose U.S. interests. Qatar is willing to gamble. I mean, what do they care? Um, all they want is uh, regime change and instability to do it. So uh, they want what? They want they want uh, uh, energy. So so it says here Qatar continues to funnel weapons to facilitate other assistance to Syrian rebels and Salafi jihadists fighting the Assad regime in Syria. This is oilprice.com. So the number one source for oil and energy news. Not some conspiracy site. But it goes on here says that. Um, Right before the conflict in Syria broke out, Iran had cut a deal with Iraq for an Iran-Iraq-Syria pipeline to pump natural gas from the world's largest gas field, South Pars, which was shared by Qatar and Iran. Qatar could not allow this to happen. It says it would have given Iran the upper hand in its perceived quest to form a Shiite crescent, and Qatar wanted the pipeline first. Kind of interesting, Iraq accuses Qatar of financing jihadi groups in Syria. So Iraq's been kind of outspoken the last week or so especially when they had, um, and this is supposedly a U.S.-backed government that's in place here. It's Shiite uh, and supposedly made uh, Iran stronger by having a Shiite government in Iraq instead of a Sunni-led one with Saddam. Uh, but the thing is, is what? Uh, these Western-backed NATO death squads um, actually killed a bunch of Syrian soldiers in Iraqi territory. 
including some Iraqis, as they were trying to return after chasing rebels out of Syria and pursuing them into Iraq. They were going back to Syria and they were attacked, and like 50 of them were killed by these uh, by these uh, Sunni Salafists, whatever. So Iraq's national security advisor said Monday that Qatar and other Arab countries, along with non-governmental groups, NGOs, i.e., are financing al Nasra, the al-Qaeda group, the Syrian jihadi group, with the acquiescence of Turkey. These are the same sources that finance al-Qaeda, they said. In times of crisis, some countries use al-Qaeda, some countries make peace with al-Qaeda, he said. See, that's just like 1984. Our enemies are our friends, our allies, uh, you know, down the road. But the Iraqis were keen to stress that they were bear no goodwill towards Syrian President Assad, whom they say caused a lot of suffering over the years in Iraq, and that they sympathize with the suffering of the Syrian people. Again, I'm not a local there. You know, I, I don't know what the situation on the ground is. But like I said, is that the Western-backed government saying that? Um, or is that them really saying that? Who knows? I guess only they do. New gas pipeline will connect Iran and Syria. So Iraq on the February 19 gave its okay for construction of a natural gas pipeline across its territory connecting Iran to Syria. So this is kind of interesting, right? Because we were just talking about this. $10 billion project is designed to supply gas uh, near the giant offshore South Pars field, the largest in the world shared with Qatar to Syria, as well as other export markets. The pipeline could also be extended to Lebanon and Europe in the future. If they can get the regime change done, right, in time says the first part of the pipeline through Iraq will be completed in June 2013 and will connect southern Iranian port to Iraq and then to Syria. We've already seen this Pakistan-Iran gas pipeline to raise Syria's concerns, says the U.S. They warned Pakistan of this Iran-Pakistan pipeline project. It would raise serious concerns uh, under the U.S.-Iran Sanctions Act. The U.S. is actually talking about what? Imposing sanctions on Pakistan. And again, that's another Western puppet government. NATO's oil pipeline to be open for civilian use. The NATO oil pipeline in Turkey, which has so far been used solely for NATO purposes, will be open for civilian use according to a source in the Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources, who prefers to remain unnamed. U.S. General urges keeping 13,600 troops in Afghanistan beyond 2014, so just another source uh, saying what, uh, reiterating what we've been covering. Tuesday, General Mattis, the commander of the U.S. Central Com, Command told the Senate Armed Service Committee in Washington that 13,600 soldiers should remain in Afghanistan beyond 2014. I have made my recommendation. General also stated that his original proposal for the number of troops was 20,000. Military decides you shouldn't see key de data on Afghan insurgency. So it goes on and says one of the major metrics for the decade-long Afghan war is, flaw is seriously flawed. Rather than fix the problem, the U.S. NATO military command has decided you simply shouldn't see the data. Last month, ISAF con conceded that it misreported the 2012 statistics on Taliban attacks. They said it was a data entry error uh, reported by Afghan forces so much that the insignificant change in the level of so-called enemy-initiated attacks became a 7% decline from 2011 levels. So ISAF's response, the AP uh, recounts, is to end public reporting on enemy-initiated attacks. From the Times of Israel, we have this. From March 5th, we have prepared a military option for Iran, says U.S. General. Again, this is Mattis, diplomatic and economic efforts failing to bring Islamic Republic to its knees. So there he is. So sanctions are not preventing Iran's nuclear progress, the army commander said, adding that he had prepared a military option. So a lot of stuff's going on behind the scenes. Uh, we were talking about a war for, you know, a spiritual war and stuff like that, a war for your soul, you know. Uh, there's also just real physical wars going on within the military, uh, people being assassinated, people being blackmailed, uh, forced to uh, step down. So a lot of stuff. Not everybody's on board in the intelligence, intelligence community, and that's stuff that we're just never going to see in news articles. You just have to try to read between the lines. Uh, Central Com chief rejects diplomacy. He says Iran must be brought to its knees, like we were saying, says that uh, uh, open warfare is just one alternative. This is Mattis again. And lastly, in France, Mali war now in bloodiest phase yet. Uh, another French soldier has been killed, I think the third one. It's a stunning omission from the French. 70 dead, 1,000 or over 1,000 flee in eastern Congo, Red Cross workers say. So it's getting pretty bad out there. So the Red Cross uh, says the situation is very serious. They're seeing burnt out houses and casualties. It's shocking. 
of shock here. The fighting occurred despite the UN brokered peace deal recently signed by 11 African nations, including the Republic of Malaysian troops attack armed Filipinos in Borneo Island. The Filipinos are followers of the Sultan of Sulu and have occupied the area since February 2012, demanding recognition as the rightful owners of the land. Thank you.